I'm Jan Cunningham, and I'm the chief judge for the Eaton County Trial Courts. Uh, Eaton County is the seat of Charlotte, if you don't know where Eaton County is. Um, I have an adult drug court, and I also have a veterans court. Um, I couldn't agree more with everything that Judge Dobrich said. As you can tell, she is a fireball, and actually I know that she's been at many of the trainings when I first got involved in, uh, in the specialty courts. That's one thing that is unique is that we go to a lot of additional training simply because we have law degrees doesn't mean we have the skill set and the knowledge to help people in the way that these courts do it. So a big part of having a problem solving court is going to training. And we do that training, not just as judges, but with our whole team. And that's a very unique experience because you're spending time out of the courthouse, you're spending time with a prosecutor, a defense attorney, the mental health providers, a probation officer, uh, and you're all learning a new way to deal with people that are in the cr criminal justice system. And you all have to have the same goal, which is we don't want to put people in jail. And certainly my drug court is a prison presumptive program. We don't want to put people in prison if their problem is substance abuse. And uh, as Judge Mack talked about her mental health court, in reality, I think all of us would say that most individuals that are in either a sobriety court or a drug court have some type of co-occurring mental problem. It's, there's an underlying issue there. So that makes the programs very unique. Uh, what makes the veterans court unique compared to a sobriety court or a drug court is first of all, the participants. My veterans treatment court are both uh, individuals that are, have misdemeanors or felonies, meaning their contact with the criminal justice system could lead them to the county jail. It may lead them to prison. They have all served our country and veterans court's goal is to give back to those veterans and try to help them in the best way that we can. And to do that, we know that we need that peer support that uh, Judge Mack talked about, but our peer support comes from veterans. So we have a, a veteran coordinator that's part of that team that I described who meets with us as we staff each and every person and talk about them. And then every participant in our program has a veteran, a peer veteran assigned to them. Now that veteran has already served our country and now they're serving again. They go to training. It isn't something they just say, hey, I wanna do this. They say they wanna do it and then we send them to training so that they can also have the skill set necessary to help. That's a huge part of it because a veteran, had, you know, coming out of the military, they are used to a regimen and a discipline, which works well in the problem solving court because as Justice Clement said, and um, Judge Dobich and Judge Mack, we're, it's a very intense outpatient program. And so that part works well for the veteran, but the, the issue we have with our veterans is that they come back after serving their country. Some of them have physical injuries, but some of them have what we call invisible wounds. Uh, they suffer from post-traumatic stress syndrome, which they get as a result of the horrific things they have seen serving our country. And it just turns out that June is PTSD Awareness Month, which is post-traumatic stress syndrome. Um, and it is a devastating uh, disease. It can cause <clears throat> depression. It can cause them to isolate themselves. It can cause problems with their family. And what we see a lot is self-medication. The self-medication is alcohol or drugs and that spirals into getting involved in the criminal justice system. And so our job is to help them. And with that, we have our partners, the VJOA, the Veterans Justice, they have a person on our team. And then we have the Veterans Affairs programs that help us with treatment and help us get them 
uh, if necessary, financial need, and also help with training. So the Veterans Treatment Court has that added component of dealing with additional team members and hopefully additional resources. But with that comes the need to do things that we can always use money for. For example, we want to give gas cards to our veteran mentors because they're driving to court, they're driving to visit their mentee, they're taking their mentee out for coffee. So we want to pr provide support uh, for them also. But overall, I would say that the success of the Veterans Treatment Court is uncomparable even to the drug court uh, because they tell us over and over again, we've given them back their life. They've really been at the abyss and we've helped them move forward. Now, unlike drug court and sobriety court, sometimes our goal isn't to get employment for them. Sometimes our goal is to help them get VA benefits. Sometimes the place that they're in, they don't even know how to navigate the paperwork and all of the things that they do and what they qualify for. So that is um, oftentimes what we help them but if they, have this, if they have the ability, we do try to get them back in school or help them get a job. Uh, the Veterans Administration helps us in family matters. So for example, we can get them in a program uh, called Warriors to Soulmates, which helps them get back into a relationship that they desperately need. So in Michigan, we have 27 uh, Veterans Treatment Court and we have a very high uh, success rate of graduation and a very low recidivism rate. I would like to, and I agree with everything that uh, everyone has said today, and I do want to thank Justice uh, Clement and Justice McCormick, Chief Justice, for having me participate, because there's one, two unique things that I would like to share as I close. All of these programs we use incentives, but we all have to have sanctions, right, judges? I mean, there has to be sanctions. Uh, we, we learn about distal and proximate uh, sanctions where, in other words, where somebody doesn't do what they're supposed to do and they have control over it, sometimes not. But we have to have sanctions and we prefer not to have that be time in jail. So one of the sanctions that we use a lot is community service. Uh, if they didn't do something they were supposed to do. So during COVID, that has presented a unique problem because there isn't community service to do. Most of the places that people go to do community service or to do their sobriety hours are closed. And so collectively, our sobriety court, our community corrections people here at Eaton County, who are awesome, came up with some really unique ideas, such as um, they could read and record children's books into YouTube. They could go grocery shopping for a vulnerable person or a neighbor who could not do so. They could write thank you notes for essential workers. They could mow a neighbor's grass. They could decorate windows around the neighborhood for people to see uh, driving by. They could do a how-to video if they have a specific skill set. So I thought that was really unique that they came up with other ideas that we could use. and. Um, as with this COVID, there are silver linings. I think we're gonna keep this and still use it even if we get back to traditional uh, community service in the community when things open back up. But the last thing I'd like to say with the 4th of July approaching is this. One of the things that I was most surprised about when I started doing this six years ago was the reaction of veterans to the 4th of July. Uh, now as Judge, uh, as they will tell you, when a holiday approaches, one of our jobs as judges is to ask the, each individual whether the holiday coming up is going to pose any unique problems for them or triggers. And we do a holiday sobriety plan if somebody, if a particular holiday is really going to impact them. When I first started doing Veterans Treatment Court, more than one veteran told me how much they did not like the 4th of July. And that is because many of them suffer from PTSD. That results in having a very negative reaction if people in their neighborhood light off firecrackers or you know those things that just make a really loud noise that you throw on the sidewalk. So the one thing I would say if anybody is watching this is 
um, Fourth of July is a time that we do celebrate the people defending our country today and the people that have done it in the past, our veterans. So if you or somebody you know likes to light off firecrackers or loud noisemakers to have fun during this time, uh, check and see if a veteran lives in your neighborhood. And if they do check with that veteran and see whether or not they suffer from PTSD, because I know nobody would want to deliberately force a veteran to have to be cloistered in their bedroom because they're hearing things in their neighborhood that make them afraid. So I didn't want that to be a negative. I wanted it to be a positive message, hopefully, because I never thought about that until I started doing Veterans Court. So I thought I would share that as I conclude about Veterans Court. Thank you for having me.